or tactical team. Hey there guys, this is me, Malorian, and this is going to be another Orc Tactical Team. And today, the topic is going to be... Una 2 sucks. So, what this is going to be all about is that we just had the dynamic update that came out from Privateer Press, and this is just kind of like, came out of nowhere. Nobody I was talking to had any idea this was coming, and really just came and uh, said, hey, we know these things are a problem. Boom. Fixed. There you go. And uh, the number one thing that came just off the heels from having a big uh, Una 2 versus Una 2 final there is, uh, yeah, Una 2 really taking a big hit. Now, there's two parts that got hit to Una 2. The first thing was that, you know that awesome, awesome feat that says, uh, you can't be attacking my birds? Well, that's now just on my turn, not the round. So the whole idea where you're sending out those griffins and they're setting up a line and they're blocking guys and they're invincible, uh, yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. So now they can't be attacked while they're flying over and trying to do things like that. There'll be no uh, free strikes or anything like that, but uh, they can't any longer be invincible and saying, huh, I'm around your caster, what are you going to do? Well, I'm, I'm going to kill them, that's what I'm going to do. The other part that they changed as well is with the Griffins, changed them up so that before, the Scarfell Griffin was pretty much a no-brainer because it had long leash and it had stealth and happy, happy, happy. Well, now it doesn't have long leash. So whereas before, Una 2 could be staying back and saying, yeah, guys, go do your thing. Now she has to get up there and things a little bit more you know, dangerous for her. So pretty much with that, Una 2 sucks and she's garbage. I'm not going to leave it there, guys. The main point I want to get with this is that actually, I don't think she is going to be garbage. Now, is she completely worse from how she was before? Yeah, there is no way that I can come on here and say like, hey, actually she got better. No, 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 she got worse. Uh, but is she now utter trash? No, and I think that a lot of people are gonna just assume they're like, well, she's garbage, put her over here, not want to play her. And that happens with a lot of casters. Whenever they get a big, huge nerf, they're like, yeah, this, this sucks, so I'm just gonna get rid of that, and uh, yeah, I'm never gonna play that again, because it's not as good as it, what it used to be. But looking at her, she still has a lot of game that I'm hoping that people are actually going to be realizing. Now, the first thing is the whole hit and run aspect. So part of the way you could be playing Una 2 before is where she could rush up and she could pop feet and say, haha, you can't do anything, and laugh while she scores on scenario. But the other part is where she could go up, attack with the Griffins, and then they sprint away. And then I come over here, kill this guy, sprint away. And if you don't really dedicate, they'll say like, okay, those guys in the front, they're dead. Good for you, thanks for the free kills. And if you ever really go and dedicate up your force, well, then that's when they go in there and they really get their work done. So that whole game of, of hitting and running is definitely something she can still do. Now, another part we should be addressing as well is that long leash thing. Does that hurt her? Absolutely, that definitely hurts her. But at the same time, uh, she has tech to protect her, and she can actually be up there pretty safely for most of the part, right? If somebody doesn't have some way to get around her tech, well, she can't really be attacked anyway, so if she has to be a little bit further up there, that's not so bad. Uh, plus, it could be a thing that leads the people actually making her more effective on the table, because she actually has a pretty good gun, so I think what you're going to see is that as the players start using her, and using her a little bit more forward, they're like, oh, yeah, I can use my gun now. Pew, 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 pew. And wow, I got some more work out of this. So I think that's going to be a little bit of a bonus to her. Of course, you have to now look for those times where like, wow, okay, this is not safe. They had the tools to take me out. Okay, don't drop in those situations. But for the most part, compared to some of the other casters and warlocks out there, she's uh, actually in a very good spot for being you know, a defensive and staying alive like she wants to do. Now another part of what the list did before too is that the Griffins would have gang and they go up and they go and do horrible things and you'd have a couple of Griffins taking out heavies and colossals. That didn't change. That didn't change whatsoever. So they still have all that threat they had before. They can still come in, kill some guys, sprint away and say, ha ha, thanks for the kills. And if you get too close, they can still come in and rip up your heavies and completely destroy them. Now, 
before, people were kind of doing this and having the, the whole, like having your cake and eating it too, where they go in, kill a couple of infantry, and then on the next turn, go after the heavies. Well, you can't have everything anymore. That, that grand old time of ridiculousness is over. So, you know, for, first of all, thank you, PP, for getting on this and fixing this. But secondly, I mean, that's not really the end of the world, right? This is War Machine, which has always been a game of chess where, okay, I'm going to trade this and then I'm going to be taking this. And so, really, if it's a thing where you're going to be going to a game now knowing that you won't be invincible, well, okay, sure, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to attack some infantry, I'm going to back away, and on the turn that I need to maybe charge over the infantry to get those heavies because they're getting a little bit too much in my grill, well, that's when I pop my feet, I can't be targeted by combat attacks, I fly over your lines, and I kill your heavies. And then I can actually then sprint back and say, all right, you infantry stay here, you know? So that's going to be doing very well. Now, of course, that means that you're going to be losing some more griffins. Uh, turns out when you're not invincible, uh, you, you die. But there's enough griffins in the list, if you go the full griffin way, that you can lose a couple and still be fine. I mean, it's almost like this whole loss aversion thing where when people realize that they can lose some griffins, oh my god, this thing sucks. I don't want to take any of this stuff. Well, now that you can actually go with something else uh, and actually be playing the game, I, I think that when people accept those losses, they're going to see that it's actually just fine. Uh, in fact, another thing will be as well is that now that I think that people are looking at the Scarfell Griffin as not being an auto-include because of that long leash, uh, they might start using some of the other Griffins. Now, in the end, I think that the Scarfell will probably still be the way to go because of the stealth and really taking away all that shooting tech from your opponent, but hey, if you want to try getting into some of the other ones, I think the door is a lot more open now, and again, almost like how we said that Una 2 is going to be further up the board and starting to use her gun more and starting to explore a few more tactics, I think the same thing is going to be coming with the, the Griffins as well. Uh, you might see a lot more mix of some other things, like, okay, well, if we're doing this peace trade thing, how about I take some more pawns? Well, how about if I take a few more units or something like this? I think we're going to see a much more interesting list, and at the end of the day, you're still going to have these griffins, which are as annoying as hell to deal with, because they're going in, doing their hit and run, and then they can always team up and get that gang against a, a colossal or some heavies and take them out, too. So... I think the biggest thing that people should learn from this is that when something takes a huge nerf, they shouldn't just abandon it. And I mean, this is going to be happening to lots of people all over the place. I mean, it happened to Kane 2. Kane 2 took a big hit, and all of a sudden, from being used and being awesome, uh, now people just don't use them at all. Ever since the nerf, I haven't seen anyone playing Kane 2. And I mean, I guess I could be blaming myself for that because I haven't been playing Kane 2 either, but I've been doing more Merc, so at least I have an excuse. But I mean, you see this time and time again where a caster or a warlock takes a big nerf and people are automatically just say like, well, I guess I'm never using this again, goes on the shelf, gets some dust, when really what they should be doing is saying like, okay, okay, maybe things were too good before, uh, now they're balanced, let's see what I can do with this model now. Ignore the stuff from before. Don't be saying like, oh man, and I can't do this anymore, and I can't do this. No, that's you're just wasting your time. You're literally doing nothing for yourself. However, if you go out and you're trying to build these new lists and seeing what the new options are, you're going to learn something, and all of a sudden, this model that you were going to just throw basically away to go collect dust up in your shelf, all of a sudden it has a use, and something you might actually want to bring to a tournament. So there you go, guys. Uh, even though we start off saying Una 2 sucks, because, you know, I, it's still good to get the meshes out there that Una 2 changed, I think at the end of the day, the real message is Una 2 doesn't suck. She's now more balanced, and I think if Circle Player's player... Uh, they're going to find that she's actually okay. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and otherwise, we'll catch you later. Bye.